ready to have your mind blown. Always. We're about to dive into a theory, mm-hmm. and it's a wild one. It'll make you question, like, <laughs> everything you thought you knew about gravity. Really? Yeah. You know, gravity, that force that keeps our feet on the ground, dictates how planets move, all that. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with gravity. Right, okay. But what if I told you it might not even be a fundamental force of the universe at all? Okay, now you've got my attention. Tell me more. So we're going to be diving into the work of this physicist, H. Kleinert. Okay. And he proposed this idea, and it's kind of out there. Like, what if the entire universe is basically... A giant crystal. A crystal universe. Okay, that's definitely in the mind-blowing category. So how does that work? Well, that's the really interesting part. We're diving into Kleinert's 2005 paper for this deep dive. It's called Emerging Gravity from Defects in World Crystal. It's a wild ride, I'm telling you. Emerging Gravity from Defects. Okay, so just from that title, it sounds like he's connecting gravity to some kind of imperfection in this crystal structure. Exactly. But first, got to set the stage a little. Fair enough, yeah. Context is key. So Kleinert, he wasn't just some, you know, random physicist with a crazy idea. The guy had a serious background, particle physics, statistical mechanics, the work. Okay, so he knew his stuff. That makes it even more interesting. Right. So when he puts this theory out there, it's like, hmm, maybe we should pay attention. So imagine this, the universe at its smallest level. Okay, I'm picturing it. It's not smooth and continuous like we usually think of it. It's more like... A grid, a lattice like a crystal. So instead of the universe being this kind of empty space sprinkled with particles, he's saying it's got this underlying structure. Exactly. And get this, we're talking about a scale smaller than an atom, smaller even than a proton. Smaller than a proton. We're talking like Planck length here, right? You got it. We're talking Planck length. That's how tiny this crystal lattice would be if it exists. Okay, so to be clear, we're talking about a lattice so incredibly tiny that it's completely undetectable with our current technology. Like, if an atom was the size of our solar system, we'd be talking about something the size of a grain of sand. Exactly. It's mind-bogglingly small. But here's where it gets really fascinating. He links this lattice structure, this crystal grid, if you will, to gravity. Okay, I'm hooked. Lay it on me. How does a crystal grid, even a tiny one, create something as powerful as gravity. He's suggesting that gravity isn't actually a fundamental force. Like, it's not baked into the fabric of the universe. Mm. Instead, it emerges from defects in this crystal lattice. Defects? What does that even mean in this context? So picture a perfectly flat metal sheet. Okay, got it. Flat metal sheet. Now imagine you bend it. You create these stress points, these areas where the sheet is warped, right? Yeah, it makes sense. Like if you crinkle up a piece of paper. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. So Kleiner's idea is that these defects in the universe's crystal lattice, these imperfections, these little wrinkles in the fabric of space-time, act like those stress points and those distortions. That's what we experience as gravity. Hold on. Let me make sure I understand this. He's saying that our understanding of gravity, this fundamental force that shapes the cosmos, could be completely wrong. That it's all just a matter of a wonky cosmic crystal. Pretty much. And here's the kicker. He doesn't just throw this idea out there with no support. Kleiner argues that these defects in the crystal lattice could actually create a kind of gravitational pull, just like the distortions in your crinkled up paper analogy. So it's not just some vague concept. He's got some math to back it up. Oh, yeah. He goes deep into the math. We're talking serious equations, the kind that would make your head spin. And I'm guessing we're not going to go through all those equations right now. Probably not on this deep dive. But the key takeaway is this. Kleinert's calculations, based on this crystal model and its defects, they actually produce equations strikingly similar to Einstein's theory of general relativity. Wait, hold on. Einstein's general relativity, that's our best current explanation of how gravity works. Exactly. And Kleinert's saying he can get results that look a lot like general relativity, but by starting with this completely different idea of a crystal universe. So is he saying he's found a completely different way to explain gravity that still fits with everything we observe? It's more like he's saying, hey, what if this is how it works? I know it's a wild idea, but look, the math kind of adds up. He's not claiming to have definitively proven anything. Right, of course. I mean, like we said earlier, actually detecting a structure as small as the Planck length is, well, let's just say we're not quite there yet. Yeah, not even close. And if we can't even see the lattice itself... How could we ever hope to see these tiny defects Mm. that are supposedly causing gravity? Mm. It's all theoretical at this point. Totally. 
But that doesn't make it any less fascinating. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What Kleiner does is open up this whole new way of thinking about the universe. Yeah, he's challenging us to question what we assume to be fundamental. Exactly. Mm. Maybe we've got it all wrong. What if there's this deeper hidden reality that we're just scratching the surface of? It's like we're trying to solve this cosmic jigsaw puzzle, right? right? We've got all these pieces we think we understand. Yeah. And Kleiner comes along and drops this piece on the table and it seems to fit. Oh, okay. But it, like it's from a completely different puzzle. I see where you're going with this. You're talking about how he doesn't just stop at gravity. Exactly. There's more to his theory, right? Right. There's another layer to it. And it's just as mind bending as the gravity part. He says, okay, so what if this crystal lattice model could also explain how matter itself behaves? Yes. This is what I was getting at. Like, it almost felt like an afterthought in the paper compared to the whole gravity from defects mm -hmm. idea. But he's like, oh, and by the way, if the universe is a giant crystal. Yeah, he sort of casually drops it in there. He says, if the universe is this giant crystal, then particles, the very building blocks of everything, are actually hopping between those tiny lattice points in the crystal. Hopping. Okay, hold on. What does that even mean, hopping? So they're not moving smoothly through space like we usually picture. Not exactly. It's not exactly like teleportation, but that's a good way to start visualizing it. Okay, so, like... Imagine the universe is playing some kind of cosmic game of checkers. Okay, I'm with you. And the checkers pieces are those fundamental particles. Electrons, quarks, the whole gang. Okay. They can only exist on the squares, not in between them. So instead of these particles moving freely, they're kind of constrained by the structure of this crystal lattice. Exactly. And their movements are determined by the lattice. They can only hop from one spot to another, and this hopping itself... Well, it changes how these particles behave. So what you're saying is, if the universe is like a giant game of Frogger... Come on, I like where this is going. And the particles are like hopping between these lattice sites, dodging obstacles, even how they interact with other particles, mm -hmm. it's all influenced by this underlying grid. It's like the game itself determines the fundamental properties of the universe. That's a really great way to think about it, yeah. It's like this interconnectedness, but it's not just some philosophical musing, right? Right. In Kleinert's model, it has real consequences. The way those particles hop from one site to another, that would directly affect how they behave their properties. It's like this lattice is the ultimate puppet master, right? Like controlling <laughs> everything we see and experience from behind the scenes. Exactly. So theoretically, if we could just zoom in and examine this crystal structure, yeah, we'd unlock the secrets of... Like, not just gravity, but also the very essence of matter itself. You've got it. It's like having this master key to the universe. Right. But, but, <laughs> big but. It's all theoretical. Like we were saying earlier, actually seeing the lattice itself is a long shot. Right. So catching those tiny particles in the act of hopping. Yeah. Good luck with that. Let's just say it's a tad beyond our current technological capabilities. But even if we can't actually see it, just knowing it could be there is kind of mind-blowing, right? It really makes you think. It's like, imagine using a map your whole life, and then someone tells you, hey, you know there might be a whole other continent you're missing. Exactly. It completely changes your perspective. And that's what I love about theoretical physics. And we get to explore these mind-bending concepts, these uh. possibilities that really push the boundaries of what we thought was possible. Even if they seem totally out there at first. And sometimes even if the answer turns out to be, well, actually, no, that's not how it works. Just exploring those possibilities can lead to unexpected breakthroughs. Right. It's all about asking those big what-if questions. And speaking of shaking things up, didn't Kleinert kind of throw some shade at string theory in this paper? He did. He wasn't afraid to ruffle some feathers, yeah. which is honestly kind of refreshing. So string theory. For people who haven't gone down that rabbit hole, what's Kleinert's beef with it? Well, string theory tries to be a theory of everything, right? Yeah. It wants to explain all the fundamental forces. Right. But to do that, it makes certain assumptions about the universe at the Planck scale, you know, the level where that crystal lattice might be. And Kleinert's saying, hold on a second, we don't even know if the universe is smooth or chunky at that level, let alone what the rules are. It's like he's saying, don't get ahead of yourself, string theorists. <laughs> exactly. He even calls his own approach radical at one mm -hmm. point. I kind of love that. It takes guts to put that in a scientific paper. Yeah. But it makes you think, right? I mean, 
so many times in history, what was considered fringe science one day became the foundation for huge discoveries later on. Exactly. Like, look at Einstein. His ideas were considered radical in his time, too. But it all comes back to being open to new possibilities, questioning those fundamental assumptions, even the ones that seem rock solid. So next time you're looking up at the stars, think about it. Something as fundamental as gravity might actually just be a side effect. An illusion, almost. Created by our limited perspective. Maybe reality, at its most basic level, is even weirder and more wonderfully interconnected than we ever imagined. And that sometimes, it's the really wild ideas, the ones that make you question everything, that end up leading to the most profound truths. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder the mind-bending possibilities of a crystal universe. Until next time, keep asking those big questions, because who knows what amazing discoveries might be just around the corner.